What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Paranormal Rush Hour. I'm your host, Ryan Rush. And tonight I want to talk to you guys about something that I've actually talked about before. But back when I talked about it initially, I didn't have near as many subscribers as I do now. So I wanted to kind of revisit this topic because it's one that stays on my mind. <laughs> like this never goes away for me. And I know there's probably a lot of other people out there that feel the same way about it. You know, they uh, typically probably don't um, think about it, you know, too, too much. But I mean, there's always one of these things that you can run into. It's it's like these are everywhere, no matter who you are or what you remember. There's something about these Mandela effects all over the place. So, if you don't know what the Mandela effect are or is, what it is actually, is it, it refers to when Nelson Mandela was, uh, I want to say, incarcerated. They, a, a ton of people recall him dying, actually passing away while he was incarcerated. Now, uh, I don't personally don't remember that, but I do remember him passing away like when, uh, the last time he did, I guess. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, I think it only happened once. However, I do remember it though. I don't remember him dying in prison. I don't even remember him being there. So I mean, I was young. So if I was even alive, then who knows? I don't. But that's where it comes from, because there were so many people who remembered him dying. And turns out that wasn't true. So all these people are like, no, there's no way. I vividly remember watching the funeral on TV and all this other stuff. Never happened. It did not happen. So they call it the Mandela Effect for that reason, because that was when it was first discovered that there's this whole thing of people, this mass misremembering going on although it's not misremembering for a lot of us there's um i had some here actually i know probably still got them somewhere in here i don't think they're down here though maybe they are let's see what these are oh yeah these are for the last episode check this out okay i got these old ones these old Berenstain Bears books. Okay, this one right here you can see, right there on the bottom, Jan and Stan Berenstain. All right, these these bears were not the Berenstain Bears when I was a kid. They were the Berenstain Bears, the Berenstain Bears. That's who they were for sure. I know that for sure. The reason I know that for sure is i mean not not to mention the fact that i have a pretty photographic memory and i can distinctly remember there being an e where that a is okay i remember that this one is older much older i can't remember where i got these i think it was back when i worked in education i had them anyhow these were way older and you know this one doesn't even say the Berenstain Bears on it, but it says Berenstain down there on their name, and it was named after the authors, Jan and Stan Berenstain. And on the side, on the spine here, it says Berenstains. Okay, so this, this stuff right here, I know for certain it was not the Berenstain Bears. And the reason I know, the reason I am so beyond certain about this is because of the way my mom pronounced it when we were kids. She always said the Berenstein Bears. All right. And we lived here in the South. People here would say Bernstein. They would call them the Bernstein Bears. That's how a lot of my friends' parents and stuff would <laughs> pronounce it. Because they had way more of a southern drawl than my mother, who was originally from upstate New York. Okay, that that right there, both of those pronunciations, 
It's not about which one's right or wrong. They both have stain or stein, which is not stain. People never said that, ever, when I was a kid. And I know my mom said stein because she pronounced it way differently than other people around here. But she always said Baron Stein Bears, just like you'd say Frankenstein with a long eye. She always said it that way, and it always stuck in my head. So I know for sure that the Baron Stein Bears used to be the Baron Stein Bears or the Bernstein Bears, however you want to say it. I don't care because now it's not the same as it used to be. Straight up. <laughs> okay, I am I am beyond certain about that. My mind will never be changed about that because I know. All right, my mom still she and she doesn't really even like stuff like this. She doesn't like to uh, be freaked out about things. <laughs> and um, when I told her about this, she could not believe it. She she knew it was not that way. Okay, so many people have been taken aback by this particular Mandela effect. And it, it I think originally it came about because Jan Berenstain, after she died, people started seeing write-ups, you know, in papers, newspapers, and things like that. And they would see her name misspelled. And a lot of them called in to the uh, whatever publication it was putting it out and told them that they misspelled the name and they said no that's the way it was spelled on the birth, on the death certificate well her son comes out and says no our name has always been Berenstain always it's never changed it's always been that the bears have always been the Berenstain bears it's never changed never had an E in it ever it's always been the Berenstain bears Every single book, every piece of merchandise, every cartoon, every, everything, it all says it. And there's something else I want to say about all this and I'll get into in a minute that is really interesting. That's another reason this this kind of uh, <laughs> this episode kind of took place because I actually got a picture that someone sent, someone I know sent me and it's really interesting and it has to do with the Berenstein Stain Bears. So... I'll show that to you guys. I'll put it on the end of the video and you can see it, but I'll tell you about it too here in just a minute. Anyhow, I want to talk about some other ones though. Like we have so many things and a lot of them I don't I, I don't remember the way that they're talking about. You know, I, a lot of them I'm not even sure about. Like one of them I know for sure I've never seen before is like Jiffy peanut butter. I've never seen a brand of peanut butter called Jiffy. It's always been Jif. Uh, there, there's tons of people who say it was Jiffy. Uh, and they're, in my mind, they're mis mis bleh, misremembering it because I know it's never been that. I've never seen it that way. Uh, there's other ones too, like Fruit Loops. They say it used to be spelled F R U I T L O O P S. I've never seen it that way. I always remember it being spelled F-R-O-O-T. And I'm pretty sure they did that because it gave them the opportunity to put more of the actual cereal in the name, spelling it with two O's in both words. That's just common, common sense advertising right there. Change the spelling so you can use your product in the actual name. I mean, yeah, I do that. <laughs> I always remember it being that way. But at Looney Tunes... People are going back and forth about that one, have been for years, saying it was T-U-N-E-S, and it's uh, or T-O-O-N-S. Which one was it? Oh, I don't remember. I don't know. I don't remember. I always remember, I'm pretty sure, T-U-N-E-S, but I never paid that much attention to it. I don't, I mean, you know, it's just one of those things. The and one, though, that does actually get to me is the Smoky Mountains. The Smoky Mountains spelling has changed. It's not the S-M-O-K-E-Y, it's the S-M-O-K-Y mountains. Uh, and this is interesting too, and it goes along with the uh, point I was going to bring up here in a, here in a minute. 
I mean, I'm, I, I mean, I could go ahead and talk about it since I'm talking about all these. But what I'm saying about all, all of this is there's also another one that I thought of that humans, the way we remember it, okay, has been recorded in certain ways. And some of them are very conflicting as in reference to the way they are now. So that's one thing that gets to me about this. When you look at how people, like, say they wrote the name on something, it doesn't seem like that stuff changed, really. It seems like that stuff kind of stayed the same. So if they spelled the name, it looks like they just misspelled it. But they were actually spelling, if they spelled it differently than it actually is now, it looks like they misspelled it, but it's actually spelled correctly as it was back when they wrote it. See what I mean? And there's models that have been built of certain things that are Mandela effects that people go back and forth about, saying it was this way or that way. And there's models saying it was one of these certain ways, because that's how someone made it, replicated it. Okay, and there's certain examples of this. The Kennedy assassination is another big Mandela effect. And that that one is just weird to me, okay? Because I remember back when I was a kid in school learning about the JFK assassination. And I can distinctly remember my teacher saying that the governor of Texas and his wife were following in a car behind them. Now, okay, it used to be a four-seater car. That's what I remember. A four-seater sedan, a convertible Cadillac, like just like it is now, except now it's a six-seater with three rows of seats, the governor and his wife in front of JFK, and Jackie in the car. Okay, and then the two Secret Service agents, driver and agent, up there in the front. Now... I remember this because I remember them talking about the way the bullet struck and all this other stuff, and there were never two other rows in front of JFK. And the bullet, the way it went, like curved and all this magic bullet stuff, you know. If you look at it that way, it totally, I mean, it was explained a completely different way back then. And it makes me wonder, maybe... Is some of this stuff getting changed so that it fits um, a better theory? You see what I mean? Like, maybe it's better explained if there's two more people in front of it, you know? <laughs> That's one thing I think about, too. Okay, did they change this stuff for a reason? Or is it all a random after effect of something? Because I never started hearing about Mandela effects until... The time they really started fooling around with CERN, with uh, the LHC up there at CERN. All right, I CERN started messing around, splitting atoms, and the next thing you know, things are changing. That's the way it kind of seems to me. It seems like around that time was around when I started becoming aware of Mandela effects, or that's when most people did. They started being noticed. Right around the time that they started firing up the LHC, the Large Hadron Collider, up there and wherever CERN is. And there's been so many weird stories about that place. You know, as far as people uh, seeing like a wormhole open up or something in different dimension, different portals. I heard people say that it opened up a portal and you heard like screaming and just all kinds of crazy dark stuff. I heard all kinds of stuff like that, rumors, you know, basically, about what happened when they actually started doing that. But, you know, they found the Higgs boson particle, the God particle. They discovered it, and I, I, that really surprised me, to be honest. And it wasn't in the place where it was supposed to be. It was like in an anomalous place that they found it, somewhere completely unexpected. You know, it wasn't supposed to be hanging out where they discovered it. So that was weird, too. That whole thing was strange. But that is when I remember Mandela effects seeming to 
come to light. It was around the time CERN started screwing around with our uh, atoms. <laughs> that's, that's it. I mean, I'm not saying that is the reason, but it's, it's a coincidence for sure. All right. Anyhow, let's get back to this. It's this way nonetheless. But the Kennedy assassination, okay, that one was strange because I remembered it, you know, being a four-seater. I mean, not four, well, I guess six-seater, but I remembered it having two rows of seats. No more, no less. And two doors, and that was that. Well, it's not that way. And the thing that makes me uh, think that, well, maybe I'm not really misremembering it, I'm actually remembering it correctly, is because there is a model of it built where it has two rows of seats, the way that it, the way that I remembered it. So anyway, you guys let me know though. Let me know in the comments what you think about the JFK assassination. If you remember it always being a limousine, always having three rows of seats and six occupants or two rows of seats and four occupants. Which one was it for you guys? I want to know. Uh, anyway, it'll be interesting to see who remembers it which way. Because I'm, I'm sure some of you were alive when it happened and can remember, you know. Just like the one with 9-11. Okay, that one really trips me out. And how many of you guys remember this? Okay, back when 9-11 happened, September in 2001. September 11th, 2001. When the Twin Towers fell. All right, who remembers a big, massive hurricane heading to the coast of New York? Actually hitting the coast of New York. That's as close as it got, was the coast. But it was headed straight for New York City. A hurricane. Who remembers this? Hurricane Aaron is what it was called. Who remembers this? It was the size of Katrina. Like an F5. Or a Cat 5. Cat 4. Something like that. Huge hurricane. I mean, this was no little storm. This thing had been bebopping up the Atlantic for a while. And it had been gaining a lot of speed. And making, you know, a huge mass out there. And it was just a huge system coming right to New York City on 9-11. It was predicted to hit New York on September 11th. What happened was... The hurricane was coming up the Atlantic coast, and it was heading straight at New York. It makes an abrupt 180-degree turn and heads on up and out into the northern Atlantic. Is that not strange? Okay, this is what actually happened. All right, this hurricane was real. This actually happened. This was actually on 9-11. There are... There's rain and wind and stormy weather reported by all the airports over there. JFK, LaGuardia, all that stuff up there. It was all reported, all right? I don't remember a hurricane. I remember nothing but blue skies the day it happened. And I remember watching the second one get hit. I remember watching it. I, I mean, I can remember exactly what I was doing. I'd gone, I'd woke up. I was I had just graduated high school, I think, and I woke up, went downstairs in the basement and where my weight bench was, and I started lifting weights because I cared about how I looked then, and I came back up, and my dad told me what had happened, and then I started just watching the news from then on. Work called me, told me not to come in, and all that stuff. That's I remember it distinctly. It was a nice day. It was pretty. It was a nice, sunny day. Clear skies, everything. No hurricane. I don't remember the, a single thing about there being a threat of a hurricane hitting New York on 9-11. Do you guys? Somebody's got to because it happened. <laughs> it actually made landfall, I think, on the coast of New York and then took off. Well, how would it do that anyway? That's strange behavior for a hurricane. That's totally uncharacteristic of a storm of that size. There's no way, man. 
This is that is some weird stuff to me. That is foreign. And I cannot say I ever remember hearing about a hurricane called Hurricane Aaron also. And I can remember a Hurricane Aaron. I was in Florida uh, during a Hurricane Aaron. I remember waking up that morning and seeing palm trees bowed over to the ground. Her winds were just horrendous. I mean, like 70, 80 mile an hour winds. It was crazy. And we had to evacuate. I remember it all distinctly. So. What's up with that? Tell me if you guys remember this. Remember Hurricane Aaron hitting New York. In New York of all places, that was way up the coast. They don't ever go up that far. Hurricanes very rarely go up there. I mean, that's a strange place for a hurricane to be to begin with. And then what happened then and all that, that's just all weird to me. Okay, that's enough about that. But I, I want to know what you guys think about that also. Because that's strange, man. I don't rem I don't recall it whatsoever. And there's there's new Mandela effects. All right, new ones. And that's what I was talking about though with the with the ones that I had mentioned, the JFK, the Smoky Mountains, the Berenstein Bears. Uh, you know, there's things that people wrote down with it spelled correctly, which is different from how it actually is, and other things like the um, the Smoky Mountains, there are signs from businesses that still have it spelled S M O K E Y. It's it's always been that way, they said. And this stuff is weird. I, I just don't know why people aren't making more of a big deal out of it. Because I know there are some people that remember it distinctly like I do, especially with the bears, you know. I mean, I know people remember it distinctly. They have to. And how that doesn't just trip you the hell out, I don't know. Because that is crazy stuff to see something you know was not that way. And you're here, here you are being told that, yeah, it's been that way the whole time. You're just misremembering it. Well, no, I'm not. My mom didn't mispronounce it and say Stein instead of Stain. I promise you, if she had read it and it said S-T-A-I-N, she would have said Baron Stain Bears. I know she would have. There's no question in my mind. She was big about pronouncing things correctly. You know, she didn't let us talk like an idiot, <laughs> I guess. Anyway, I'm just rambling there, but that's the way it is. You know, these things are, this is real deal right here. This is proof of something somehow you know some people remember it always being the baron stain bears also they claim that they always remember it being that way well maybe these people were in the a universe while us that remember it with the e were in the b universe and somehow or another you know we'd all we'd interact every now and then the one those of us from the a and the b Say it's like, you know, your cousin was in the A universe, you were in the B universe. You'd go see your cousin and interact and stuff and then go your separate ways. How do we know that they were living in the same world we were while we weren't there? We don't. So they could have actually been in a different dimension this whole time. And then we could have gone back to ours and we could just interact every now and then. Well, what if these dimensions actually all merged? Now it took on characteristics of this one and that one and messed everybody up. That's just another one of those weird theories that goes through my head. <laughs> you guys don't have to ponder that too much if you don't want to. I understand. Anyway, but that hurricane really did trip me out learning about that because I don't remember it whatsoever. And I don't know anybody else that does either. Uh, nobody has said they ever remembered a hurricane being uh, <laughs> headed for New York on 9-11. And then it not even happening. Then it turning around and going the other way. Whoa, that's crazy, you know? Anyhow, that's just one of those things, though, that that got me thinking, and I've never heard of that. And there's, a, there's a lot of new ones. That's, the, that's another thing about the Mandela Effect. It keeps coming up. Like, there's more 
stuff that people keep finding. And there's already so much. I mean, even our own physiology, our own anatomy has changed with this stuff. We now have a sheet of bone behind our eye sockets. Like, it used to be hollow, like when you'd see a skull, you would see nothing but hollow behind, your, behind the eye socket. It'd just be black. Well, now there is a sheath of bone right there behind it. It's kind of like a concave bone, like a sheet of bone. It's weird. Go look at a skull. You'll see. It's there. Scientists are baffled. They don't know how in the world we changed like that. We didn't miss it all these years. I mean, it's it was the it wasn't there, and now it is. So what's up with that? Okay, and this all makes me think. You know, well, maybe we are living in a simulation where they can just change things at will, and you know, just write it out like a program. Oh, let's change this and that, and then some of us notice, some of us don't. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, there's a lot of things, though, that keep coming up. Like the Hunger Games, there's one in that with the movie. the uh, Where they are beginning the Hunger Games. And it seems like I remember this happening in it, where someone step one of them, like, they're all on those little platforms before it begins, and one of them steps off of it and blows up. Okay, it seems like I kind of remember that. But uh, apparently that didn't happen. <laughs> that was never in the movie. Never happened. I want to say I remember seeing that part of, the, part of the movie. Someone starting early and stepping off and blowing up. I think that happened. I don't know. It's been a long time since I've seen that. I own the movie. I don't think I've ever opened it or watched it. But I saw it once prior to that. Never read the books or anything, so I don't know. Anyhow, I don't know about it, but the, it's weird. Okay, that's one of those new ones. The the there's another one, Ready Whip. Okay, the topping, you know, the whipped cream. You guys know what I'm talking about. It's delicious. Okay, the Ready Whip. How is it spelled? R E D D I. That's the first part. I know it's always been that way. But what about the the last? Part. I always thought it was whipped W H I P, just like whipped cream, whip, whipped topping, you know, whipped cream. I always thought it was W H I P. Well, apparently now it's uh, evidently now it's ready R E D D I, W I P. I don't. I seem to always remember there being an H, but that's one of those things, man. I cannot say for sure which one I remember, because I could be wrong. You know, and a lot of these I start doubting myself, second guessing myself, and that's just because I don't remember them. The Berenstain Bears, Berenstein Bears, I remember that one. See, that's the thing. That's what makes me know this is real because that one I have no doubt about at all. 100% sure. And that's why I know this stuff is real. And just because I don't remember it that way doesn't mean that that's how it is because. People are remembering these different ways. Everybody is remembering them differently. Okay? It's not just like one or two people. There's a whole mass of people that will be remembering this certain one this way. And vice versa. So, it's it's a weird phenomenon. It really is. And it's one that I actually lost sleep over this stuff, man. Trying to figure this out. Think about it. And start getting into quantum theory and <laughs> quantum entanglement and stuff. That's what I, that's what it always led me into. And man, once I start thinking about that crap, I just cannot shut my mind off. I just start running with it. And next thing I know, it's 5 o'clock in the morning and I haven't slept any and I'm still wondering about how in the world we get entangled with another dimension. And, you know, it's not cool. Not cool. I've lost a lot of sleep thinking about that kind of stuff in my life if you guys can believe that <laughs> anyway there's another one that really gets me because i do remember this okay there is you you guys remember the dogs playing poker like uh painting it's actually a painting there's prints of it just everywhere like all over the place you can look everywhere you look you know in a bar you go into a bar and it better be hanging on the wall. 
If it's not, you're not in a good place. So see that that's the way this painting is. It's that common. And like Roseanne, you remember it was in well, I think that may have been the dogs playing pool. But the dogs sitting around playing poker is a well known thing and painting. And one of them, I remember the seeing one. It may have been a recreation, may have been a different one, who knows? But it had a transparent green poker visor on. I remember that. Well, that never existed. A painting with a dog with a green visor on. Okay. There's there's weird ones like that. Tons of those. You know, like Freddie Mercury singing We Are the Champions. It's like at the end, in the actual recording, he never said, like, of the world. It's We Are the Champions. And I think that was it. Something like, yeah. I don't know. There's one about that. You guys can look it up because I'm probably telling you wrong on that one. A lot of these I don't, you know, delve into that far. But there's other ones like Scooby-Doo, like with Shaggy. Uh, <laughs> they say he never had an Adam's apple. And like when he was drawn with an Adam's apple. They said that, is no, he never had one. His throat was always, you know, straight. No Adam's apple there. I seem to remember him having an Adam's apple because he, like, when he'd get freaked out and stuff, it would, like, move, I think. Like, like when he'd gulp, you know, it would, like, bob up and down. I think he did have an Adam's apple. Let me know if you guys remember that, too. Shaggy from Scooby-Doo. If he had an Adam's apple or not. Let me let me know what you think about that. Because that's interesting too. I wondered, you know, because I'd want to say I remember him having one. I don't know. That's one though that I can't say for sure because I don't know 100% if he did or not. I cannot remember that accurately with that one. But that's one of those things. Animals, like there's animal ones. There's uh, the horses. Horses can grow mustaches. Do you guys know that? I didn't know that. I didn't think they could grow mustaches. But yeah, apparently horses grow mustaches. Look it up. Google it. <laughs> and you'll actually see pictures of horses with mu big old mustaches. It's a trip. I've never seen it before. Never heard of it before. But it's a thing. It, it's real. African gray parrots. I love African grays. They are extremely intelligent birds. Like, definitely the smartest parrot. And they have, actually, the IQ of a five-year-old. They can distinguish shape and color and stuff like that. They're extremely intelligent birds. And, and they can distinguish, who like, voices just by hearing the tone, hearing the sound. They know who it was, and it, they're interesting animals. Well, African greys, okay, their tails have always been red. They have their gray birds, gray and white, but they have these brilliant red tails. They're beautiful. Okay, I've always remembered them with a red tail. Every African gray I've ever known had a red tail. But there's people out there saying, no, they never had a red tail. They were always like gray. Gray-tailed parrots. I don't remember them with a gray tail ever, ever, ever. So maybe that's misremembering or something, but they're say, you know, they say that could be a Mandela effect also. I don't know. Um, one of the weird ones, though, is DEA, the DEA. What I always thought was the Drug Enforcement Agency. I really remember it always being agency at the end of that. Well, no, it's always been the Drug Enforcement Administration. I don't remember it being that ever. And uh, D.A.R.E., the D.A.R.E. program, you guys remember that? I remember that. I remember them coming in there. <laughs> the D.A.R.E. people coming in there and talking to us, making it sound like we were going to be living in a gutter if we ever smoked a joint or tried to try a little hit of weed. You know, that was it. We were going to we were Our lives were ruined. We we're going to kill every brain cell we ever had. We're going to be dropping out of high school next thing you know, and then we're going to be waking up in a, in a ditch trying to find our next fix of cannabis. That's exactly what D.A.R.E. was. Fear-mongering at its best with kids. Anyway, that's long gone and needs to stay that way. 
Actually, I heard they were bringing it back. No, no kidding. There is a county, I think, north, the one north of us, who is actually spending money on D.A.R.E. They're, they're like buying like an $80,000 uh, police interceptor and painting it all up D.A.R.E. colors and logo and whatever. Yeah, they've already allocated all that money and I believe bought it and invested in all this. They're, they're bringing their D.A.R.E. program back. Anyway, it's a bunch of BS is what it is. Uh, it didn't do anything except the numbers of drug abuse or drugs, drug use went up. Okay, but that gets me to the Mandela Effect part of it. DARE, what does that stand for? Okay, I always thought it was drug and alcohol resistance education. Okay, evidently it is not. It is drug abuse resistance education. That's what it stands for. And I heard someone say something about it where uh, they were like, you know, that doesn't make much sense, you know. They're just saying that, well, okay, we just don't want you to abuse them. Go ahead and use them, but just, you know, here's <laughs> here's ways to resist abusing them, you know. That wouldn't make sense. It would be drugs and alcohol. I'm pretty sure I remember that correctly. But I could be wrong. What do you guys remember? Let me know in the comments because I'd like to know. I really would. I want to know what you guys think about all this. What you what you remember and what you don't. You know, leave it in the comments. Just keep watching and keep, you know, stop and pause it and write it down. I don't care if you leave 20 of them. Just let me know which ones you guys remember. How you remember it being. That's what I want to know. Were you Generation A or Generation, I mean, uh, <laughs> Dimension A or Dimension B? That's what I want to know. All right, check this out. Now, we do the dare. Well, uh, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. One of those is a book and one of those is a movie. All right. I honestly always thought that it was Charlie and, and the Chocolate Factory for both the book and movie. Like, I, I never knew anything, any other different name. I knew it wasn't like, I knew Willy Wonka was like one of the main characters in it, but I knew the movie didn't, the title didn't have his name in it. Well, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory evidently is what the movie with Gene Wilder in it is called. The book is called Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Isn't that weird? I thought it was weird because I always remembered it. I don't, I don't ever remember a Willy Wonka in the Chocolate Factory, I don't think. I do remember distinctly Charlie in the Chocolate Factory. Maybe I'm wrong and maybe it's always been two of them and I've just not you know, made the association that they're different, the book and the movie. I don't know. Who knows what I've heard and what I was thinking. But I know some of you guys will remember this better than I do, so... I want to know what you think about that too. You know, I'm interested to know about all this because it's been a while since I've really talked to people about Mandela effects and there's a lot going on with them because there's so much that it covers now. There's so many of them. Like, did you guys know an upside down Christmas tree was a thing? That's like some been some trend that started. I had never seen anything about it, but... I don't know. The thinker statue? Was he sitting like this? Or like this? With his fist on his forehead? Was it on his chin? Thinking? Or his forehead thinking? I always want to say it was his forehead, but I'm not 100% sure. I think now it is his forehead. But a lot of people think it's his chin. Or something like that. Like, you know, how he's... Thinking, huh? I, you would think really that the chin would be more logical, I guess. I don't know. I'm not a sculptor and don't plan on sculpting someone thinking anyway. But, you know, the new movie with Willy Wonka, though, is, is Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. But the old movie is Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. So they named the new movie after the book, the same name as the book, which is Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, and then the 
first one, Willy Wonka movie, was called Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. So that's where that that's where that stands. But it's it's just weird. There's so much of this stuff. I also saw one about uh President President Roosevelt. Okay, and I want to say I remember hearing about him uh boxing a kangaroo. Do you guys remember that? Roosevelt boxing a kangaroo? I I don't know, but there was an episode of that cartoon show Futurama that showed a head of President Roosevelt. It was like put in a glass container, I guess. They were keeping like the head of Roosevelt alive or something. And he was in this glass container and then they start showing somebody fighting a kangaroo and he starts saying stuff about it or something. You know, it was one of those things that makes you say, well, okay, someone made this and it has to have some kind of relevance to him being rumored, I guess, to have fought a kangaroo. But as it is now, there never even was a rumor about him fighting a kangaroo. Like, that never even was a thing. So, <laughs> what's up with that stuff, man? These things are getting crazy. Guys, there's so many of them. And it makes me wonder, okay, is it just because there's new ones happening and we're just noticing them? Or are they occurring, you know, year by year? And is it the result of someone messing with our timeline? Or is it something else happening? Is it someone actually pre reprogramming what we have in our world, in this matrix that we're in, I guess? If we are, and we, who knows, we probably are, man. And uh, is it that? Or is it uh, just random coincidence? Or is it CERN? Are they screwing with us really bad? Messing with this L LHC, you know, and they're going to be building more large hadron colliders, bigger ones too, in different places. Right now, I think we only have that one, and it's massive too. It's like the size of a, you know, superdome or something. Like it's like a mile long, and it's just insane, man. They they got to get that thing going fast to split an atom. Well, they do that, and it's, <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Um, I, it makes me wonder, though, is it stuff like this happening that's causing things to change? These Mandela effects to occur. Is that what's going on? I want to know. I would love to know what's causing this stuff. And there are people who have actually gone and had, you know, sit-downs and thought about this and come up with theories using quantum physics and stuff like that on how this could actually occur and a lot of that is just way out there and I don't know that there is a scientific explanation for it as far as you know in terms of where we are in science currently I don't know if we're capable of figuring out of even beginning to figure out what is going on with that stuff I really don't know, but I can tell you that the, the, the Bernstein bears freaked me out. That was the thing that really set me off on this because I know for certain there's no question. And you know, there's other ones, tons of them, sex in the city. Is it sex and the city or sex in the city? Because I want to say, like, now it's sex and the city or something. And they say that that's the way it's always been. I don't know. I wasn't a huge fan of that. But one of my friends was. And I can remember her, like, like uh, saying it all the time. But I still can't remember exactly. And that's another thing. Sometimes these changes will be so subtle. It'll be a certain thing. Like, okay, well, that could be misinterpreted. It could be misheard. And I think a lot of these are. Like in The Lord of the Rings, there's one where Gandalf says, fly, you fools, when he's falling off the bridge or something. And uh, a lot of people say, no, he originally said, run, you fools. Uh, he never said that. I know because I knew he didn't say run, but I could never tell exactly what he did say until I was able to watch it with some captions or something. <laughs> but... I remember seeing it in the movies and stuff and not knowing what in the world he said. Fraw, you fools, is what it sounded like to me. It's what it looked like and sounded like. So I was like, 
what in the world is flaw? Flaw, you fool. Flaw, you fool. You know, that's how he did it. <laughs> He's not. Anyway. Okay. Yeah, that's that's what happened with that. I don't know. It could have very easily been misremembered or misinterpreted by somebody. and Or a lot of people, if it sounds a certain way. You know, it could be. And 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 in is one of those things that, you know, it could go either way. They sound extremely similar. So I don't know. I really don't know. But uh, there's a lot of those. A lot of those little, eh, was it this way or that way kind of things. That makes up a whole bunch of these Mandela effects. And I think a lot of these shouldn't exist. I think a lot of them are just people, you know, trying to find something, you know, that could be this way or that way. One of the things that I do wonder about, though, is Grand Central Station. Grand Central Station has never existed. There's never been a place called Grand Central Station in New York. It's Grand Central Terminal is what it's called. And that's the thing. I never knew it was called Grand Central Terminal. I don't doubt it. But I wonder if it just got the moniker Grand Central Station just because it's like a train station. Or if it actually was Grand Central Terminal all this time and people just, you know, remembered it a different way. That's, I wonder about that. Okay. But anyway, I don't know, man. There's so many of these. So go look them up. See which ones you guys remember. Because you'll you'll find one, I'm sure. There's so many of them now. You'll find one that really makes you flip out and be like, what? I don't remember it that way, you know? But it could be just a, a case of mis misremembering. However, they are not all cases of misremembering because I know I am not misremembering the Berenstein Bears existing. And that's what always brings this around for me is knowing is uh knowing that knowing that there is something that I know for sure was not the way they say it is I know beyond any doubt that that didn't ever exist as Baron Stain prior to me finding out about this <laughs> I mean that's when it changed and I could go into a whole lot of stuff that still blows my mind thinking about like uh, you know, how you're not conscious of things until until you are. So they could be anything until you become aware of it. And I don't know if I conveyed that right, but like meeting a person, you know, you don't know that this person exists. They're not even in your life until you meet them. Then you're aware of them being there and them, you know, actually having an impact on the present. That's the thing. So... Is this stuff just things that we're being introduced to? Or is it something that we've been impacted by forever and don't remember it correctly? Or did it all really change? And if it did, there's something else going on here that we probably need to get the bottom of. <laughs> we probably need to figure it out. I'd feel better if we did. So anyway... All right, guys, I've talked about this for a while, and I'm sure you are um, still enjoying it, but all good things must come to an end. I'm sorry. Anyway, I really appreciate all of you, and I appreciate all my new subscribers, everybody that's uh, watched in the last few weeks. I mean, my views have gone up, and I really, really appreciate that, guys. You have no idea how much it, it really helps me to know that you guys are enjoying it and you watch it. And if there's anything that you guys want to write to me or let me know or whatever, you can all feel free to email me at paranormalrushhour at gmail.com. Remember to send me your paranormal mail. I want your stories. I want to hear about all the crazy stuff that has happened to you. It's happened to me, and I know that I'm not the only one. And I've had so much crazy stuff happen to me that, don't worry, I'm not going to think you're crazy. Because I promise you, I've seen just as crazy or crazier stuff. 
<laughs> weirder. As weird or weirder. However you want to say it. I told you crazy is my word. But anyway, you guys are awesome. And I really appreciate all the construct uh, constructive comments that you guys have given me. That stuff really, encouragement and all that stuff, it really makes a difference. And uh, helps me with my motivation a whole lot. So I'm trying to keep everything current for you guys. I'm trying to keep uploads coming and episodes coming and whatever else. So anyway, I've got some good paranormal mail, some good emails coming up. And I'll have another episode up for you guys as soon as I can. So with all that being said, everybody please stay safe. Take care, and I will see you guys really soon. Till then, take it easy.